I'm ready. my French. Landon! Oh dear. Howdy, I'm Max, and in this video we are going to be reviewing the Dart XL Wing. Now before we go any further, I want to give you a heads up. This video is in two parts. This first part we are going to be here on the desk, we're going to be looking for the good points, and unfortunately the long list of bad points. And then we're going to get across to the flight line, and we are going to see the maiden of not just one, but two of these Dart XL wings. And unfortunately, they both suffer from exactly the same issue, which is actually a manufacturing error. And you'll find out about that in just a few moments' time. Also, from the very beginning, let's make it absolutely clear, this model was brought out of my own money for my own abuses. And that is the same as Austin's model. This Dart XL wing was not sent to us for as a free before review. As such, unfortunately, our negatives list is far, far longer than the positives list. But I don't want to put you off this model because it does fly extremely well, uh, as you'll see later on in this review. Now, with that said, the Dart XL, we need to just address the elephant in the room, which is that no two ways about it, this model is, for all intents and purposes, a clone of the right wing mini track. Now, the reason why I can tell you that is because the dimensions, so its uh, length and also its wing width, are spookily millimeter close to a mini track. And that is by absolutely no accident. You could not get so close as what Zo HDD have managed to get close to the mini track. However, we need to actually give Zo HD some thumbs up. And the reason why we're gonna give them some thumbs up is because if I was to, to design a model with the forward swept design to be similar to a mini track, which by the way, there's many other iterations of a forward swept wing, is I, this is far better than anything I could personally design, so thumbs up for Zo HD. Also, we must keep in the back of our mind that bringing a product or a model uh, and put it into mass production is actually innovation in itself. Keep that in the back of your mind, okay? Because we are gonna go through a few negative points, but that gets overlooked so often, and you go, oh, people go, oh, it's just a cheap claim. No, keep in the back of your mind. Innovation can be bringing a product to a mass audience, okay? Now, let me just look at my to-do list, and unfortunately, I'm here using my phone, I can tell you there's a very long list in here, especially the negatives, okay? We have to say, like I was saying, we have to give thumbs up for Zo HD because it is a relatively well thought out model that you nobody could argue that nobody is somebody is given a lot of time, effort, and energy and thought into the design of this model. However, we do have a few niggles with the model itself, as we'll find out. Uh, but again, thumbs up to Zo HD. There's a lot of time, effort, and energy which has gone into getting this model to market. Also, when this model's in the sky, it is very, very light and floaty. This thing will glide for days. That's probably something to do with this sheer amount of reflex, in other words, the amount of up they've actually got in the mold. Uh, if you look back here on the back of the wing, you'll have to take my word for it, it really is swept up, so uh, this model has an awful lot of reflex built into it by default. Now let's go and get into those negatives, and like I said, unfortunately, we do have a long list of negatives. The biggest one, and I, uh, it's a manufacturing error, okay, there's no other, no, other, no other words around this, is to do with the motor mount, is that A, the motor mount is too flexible, and that's to do with the foam and no reinforcement behind it, and also the thrust angle is wrong too, so. And if you look on there, you'll see, just there, that there's a ton of down trim in it as well. Let's take a look at the rear end of this model, and by the way, some of you may notice that this has got a slightly different hatch. Let me take that off there for a moment, because we will get to that in a moment. So let's put the original hatch on. Let's go and turn it around and look at the uh, rear end. Now, when it comes to the thrust angle of this, and this is exactly the same for Austin's model too, is basically the motor is pointing too far down 
into the fuselage. So as such, I need about three mil, and I mean at least three millimeters worth of washers to tilt the motor back down. So that, because, and let me explain what was happening, is that under throttle is the model was just climbing to the point it wanted to just roll over in the sky. And unfortunately, we had a bit of an unscheduled landing with this one. I'm ready. I'm ready. Oh, that's a new mix. Ooh, that. Yeah, full, that's full up. Oh. 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 <laughs> Shoots my French. That it? Oh dear. And that was almost exclusively down to this fr uh, thrust uh, angle. Uh, there was actually a compounding, there was a lot of issues compounding why this model got smashed in the ground, uh, and we'll get to those in a moment, but the thrust angle was a major one. So, not only was the thrust angle wrong on this motor, and this is a plug and play kit, so this is exactly how it turned up, well, almost exactly how it turned up, I have modified it slightly, uh, you will need to put at least three millimeters worth of washers underneath the top two screws uh, on here to push the, or underneath the X mount to push the motor down, also, uh, and it's really obvious, look for this in the video of Austin's model, because I can't show you on mine because I've been and fixed it, uh, is that you will now notice on the back of my model, I've got this plywood plate, which is actually the battery bay, which got smashed to pieces. And then underneath here, I've got two pieces. Have I got a bit of plywood kicking around here on my desk? Is that we've also got two vertical pieces of plywood, which I've cut in. I'll put a photo up on the screen so you can see what I'm talking about. And that now means is that this motor, what's happening, what's happening, what was, was happening is that you'd throttle up and then because the foam back here is so soft, the, you had a, like a compounding issue. Not only was the motor angle wrong and then it was pushing down, so it was pushing the no, nose up, this whole foam section pushes forwards or was pushing forwards, so you had this like bad feedback loop, which is the more throttle you used, the more it went up and then the more the foam bent, oh. Terrible. So I've been and fixed that for mine. Also, while we're on the negative side as well, when it comes to this rear end of this model, is this top hatch. Now, like I said, Zoe HD have spent a lot of time, effort, and energy, and it's glaringly obvious that they've been and done that. And when we first got this model, it was a bit curious what this back rear section was for. And uh, it would again, I like it because it gets a lot of airflow through. However. What we found is that when we flew this, the model was very, very noisy. Well, my model specifically was very raspy in the sky. And the reason for that is that you have a good, let me just go and put that on there a second. You have like five centimeters or a, a good two inches. Now mine's a little bit amplified, so that's why I got the rule out, rule out just to check. You'll see on the back of here, look at that propeller, okay? The air has got to come across and you don't really realize, oh, there's no way I'm going to get right in there. And you've only got like an inch and a quarter or so on top of the propeller. Well, in my end, so maybe two inches on top. Uh, and the rest of it's all blocked up by this great big cover, which is completely unnecessary because you don't actually need to put anything inside the cover at all. So what I've done with mine is that I'm actually throwing that away. Let's get that away. And shock horror, it kind of gives you like an idea of what potential I think this model's got, is that I've been and manufactured a lid out of some Depron, uh, and that now sits in there, and I'm gonna screw that down in there, like so. So what we've now got is a flat surface, so the air can come up over the top and go straight down. And that now means, is that I can turn that round, and so you can see it, is the propeller is taking all the airflow now. It's only like a little sandwich at the back, which is interrupting uh, the airflow to the motor, to the propeller, and that should cut down the noise, and it should also make the model way more efficient too. And again, if we think about the mini drag for a few moments, is that one modification which I did to my mini drag is that I actually pushed the motor, turned the motor mount around and put the motor uh, about maybe like an inch and a half further back and that put the motor into cleaner air, it made it much, it was like a fraction of the noise coming out of the back of it, uh, because the propeller was so much further away from the back of the model. And number two, I gained about 10 miles an hour in a straight line, it was brilliant. So hopefully this will now calm the noise down and make the model more efficient and make also make it a lot quieter. Now, 
That does mean we don't have so much vertical room in this back section, but to be brutally honest, you don't need it. Even if you had a normal little flight controller in there, you don't need the height. Uh, the ESC, if you need a bit of extra height, you could take this uh, plate out and then put it inside. Uh, and even if you had an Eagle Tree Vector in it, there's loads of room for that, and this is not going to interrupt that at all and yes I will be making an air vent on there and an exit hole uh, so we can get some air down and over the, the ESC as well so this is definitely a work in progress. If we turn this model around we need to talk about the nose because I I kind of knew this and I kind of proved it although it did have a heck of a smash in the ground what you may not be able to tell is this model took an absolute beating and this nose section has been smashed off. You'll notice that there's a glue line now. I am here struggling with the stand and the camera. But you'll notice the glue line there, here, chunks all there. And I've reconstructed this model because this nose section is super weak. Okay, and I'm I'm not the first, and unfortunately, I don't think I'll be showing the last Dart XL wing which has had its nose smashed off. Now, to combat that, I'm doing a collection of things. You'll notice not only do I have some 4mm carbon fibre rods running from back here up into the nose, I will also fit in a full suite of 4mm plywood all the way through that few section here to stiffen it up. Uh, I'll try and put some on the sides too to give it some extra stiffness. And I will laminate at least the fuselage too because this model now has been compromised because of its smack into the ground like you, you may have seen the gravity testing video in 4K. It did take a beating and the no section is just a massive weak point, okay? Which I want to make a point, direct comparison to the mini drac is that I have nose punted the mini drac many times. In fact, more times than I'm actually going to admit. And that model has never shown signs of breaking. And you've got to seriously hit something stupidly hard to break a mini drag. This one, it did take a bit of a hit to the ground, but the amount of foam which came out of it was just scary. Thankfully, bit of hot glue, a little bit time later, and happy days. Now, in the unboxing, I did point pick up that we do have uh, the FPV camera. It is pointing down, okay? Now, I do not like FPV cameras which are pointing down and the reason why you shouldn't like FPV cameras which are forced to be looking down is because if you're going to shoot a gap between a tree you need to know where you are in the sky and if your camera is pointing down even by a little bit that means that you're flying higher than you think you are and that's why that's how and and I, I, trust me I've learned this the hard way but so many trees so are my FPV cameras are flat okay and they are flat because I fe I'm fed up of it in trees so when you pop a gap you know exactly where you are so I do not like the downward facing FPV camera uh, the HD camera itself yeah point that downwards a little bit yeah you'll get better footage it makes it look like you're flying closer than the, to the ground than what you are now with that said now mine's been a broken and I really do not like this nose section at all but before we go any further, I'm actually going to pause for a few moments. And the reason I'm going to do that, I'm going to put a screenshot up on the screen for you. For you. Because I'm here saying some negative points, but I actually, again, I want to do thumbs up for Zoe HD because they're a newcomer into this arena for us RC pilots. Uh, and out of all the companies which I know of to do with RC, those are, that company is the one which has really taken a lot of positive feedback from the RC community and have been introducing those that feedback back into their models. Unlike some other companies which we could mention which have been peddling the same model for a year with exactly the same bloody flaws, um, not Zo HD. So while my gripes might be accurate at the time of recording, I'm putting that screenshot up because on their Facebook page, literally, this morning, the on the day of recording this, they've been to put some modifications into the Dart XL already, which is really, really good. So I'm here mentioning some negative stuff, but I'm sure ZoHD, given some time, will factor some of these changes in uh, for the better for all of us as our RC pilots. So please do take it with a little pinch of salt. Uh, I have every confidence that ZoHD will take some of these suggestions on uh, and improve this model over time. Okay, so there's me saying don't like the FPV camera mount in there. The other thing which unfortunately I don't like is this nose section, which is that there's a Runcam 3S, which is basically the same size as a session, is that when you put it in the front of there, not only does the silly plastic mould bit, which you use to stick it in here, which is over here, 
didn't actually fit it, okay, I had to cut the bottom off, uh, is also that you, wait, you can't see it now because I smashed the front out, but there was plastic bits in there which were right in the way uh, of the, the camera itself. So not very thought, well thought out as far as a GoPro session or a Runcam 3S. Runcam 2, perfectly fine, okay? Austin was using a Runcam 2 in the nose and that worked great. Also, I, I just don't like this nose section. I, I just can't wait for the RC community to come up with uh, a much, much better nose section uh, because it's just too blunt, so it's basically a great big air break. Uh, and two, it just needs to be moulded round and it's also really fragile, so I'm really looking forward to someone to come up with a 3D printed option on this nose because, uh, as I said in the beginning, I don't really like it and now I've smashed it up and I've used it. I really, really don't like it. Now, moving on to a couple of minor pet hates is that you'll notice on the top of the wing, we do not have the servo. Now, in the unboxing, a couple of people called me out and tried to say, BS, Matt, you don't need the servos on the top of the wing, and actually, I'm going to call you BS back. Now, if you don't know what we're talking about here, in short, if you imagine if we got the servo on the top of the wing and we got a push rod going across there, okay, there's our push rod, okay, 99% of the time when you're moving your uh, elevons uh, as an elevator, so moving both surfaces up, okay, you are pulling, okay, you imagine the push rod, uh, it's getting pulled, okay, so your still push rod and plastic clevets on the end is being pulled. As such, there is no flex in that. Okay, however, imagine you're trying to do a bunt, so you're trying to make the model go, go like nose down really hard and do an inverted loop. Okay, is that if you then think about that going forwards, not only will the steel uh, push rod bend, which they do bend, okay, also the clevis also bends off to one side as well. So when it comes to flying wings, you always, always always want your servos on the top of the model so that when you're pulling both surfaces up you're pulling and then that that means that you have far more control in the up axis okay so in your, uh, in your pitch axis for when you're pulling back because let's face it 99 percent of the time on the sticks you're pulling back on it uh, rather than pushing down okay uh, so i know the reason why they've done that is purely aesthetics however it has it has compromised this model. Remember we were saying about this, we had this unscheduled landing with the, and it was a compa uh, combination of issues, compounding each other. The thrust angle was wrong, the back of the motor mount was all flexible, the foam was too flexible in there. We had servos which are, with the push rods bending and the clevis is bending. I also, you'll notice that there's no ESC in here. I've actually thrown it away. I didn't like the ESC which came with this uh, model. Uh, it's Yes, it's rated for 4S. Yes, it's rated 3 amp for as 3 amp back. But I need to start removing things from possibility of being an issue. And unfortunately, I was not happy with it being a 30 amp ESC and not a 40 amp ESC, which is what it would need for 4S uh, for that KV motor, which is a 1300 KV motor. So I've actually taken that out and thrown it away for this model. Uh, and I, I am trying to work out how I can retrofit the servos on the top as well. Um, so yeah, replacing servos. The other thing, the other reason why you do not want your servos on the bottom of the wing is because where do you land a wing? You land it on the bottom. And I don't care that they've included a little piece of foam here. You have put the servo control horn and the clevis in danger. Now one of the, I am going to quickly mention it as a positive which is Zoe HD in their now later kits they will be including a little rubber bung over this clevis so that it's not going to pop loose. It's not like a, a normal traditional fixed wing which has got uh, ailerons and elevator and a rudder and one of the servos came off, one of the connectors came off on the ailerons you'd still be able to fly at home or even both you'd still be able to fly at home with rudder and elevator. Uh, with a flying wing, it would be extremely detrimental, and that'd probably be the end of the model. Uh, so it would be nice to see just a little bit of elastic band on there, especially if you consider like uh, models from Durafly. At least they get that right, okay? The other one is actually something Austin picked up. I don't know if you can see this, but I'll just run a ruler down that plastic cover. I am hitting, we are hitting, there we go, I think you can see it, we are hitting the uh, little thumb catch for the uh, top fin, okay? Uh, so that will run, get worn down over time, if not knocked off, worst case. Uh, those of you which are flying on tarmac, there is a chance that's gonna get worn away. Not particularly good, could do a little bit more thought down on that one. Talking about thought, on the bottom of this model, we've got a plastic cover here for the bottom of the winglet. We've got one up underneath its nose. However, 
the one bit which is always going to take a beat in are these wingtips and we don't have a plastic cover on those so I would love to see plastic covers on the wingtips uh, because these things it's this foam is really quite soft okay it's not the best EPP foam in the world or they call it BEPP uh, biogradable uh, EPP which will disintegrate in a hundred years time or whatever um, it's not the toughest EPP uh, I've ever seen and uh, yeah that's just going to break off and wear away over time and you're going to end up with an ugly looking model so I would have liked to have seen plastic covers on the wingtips and again that was picked up from the very beginning right let's bring that round I'm just going to make sure I've not missed anything from the from this model and let me have a quick check on the phone I'm going to have a quick slurp of the coffee mmm what did we say? Thrust angle was wrong out of the box. The motor mount is flexible. There's no bands over the clefuses. Servos are on the wrong side of the model for all the re uh, reasons which I mentioned earlier. There's no plastic covers for the wingtips. Oh, it, it flies absolutely terribly inverted. Do not fly yours inverted. Okay, it was absolutely horrible and that was the reason why we went in the ground. Not only does this model have a, sh a shed ton, metric shed ton of reflex up in the back of the model, uh, if, even if your model's slightly nose heavy and you haven't sorted out your thrust angle issue on the back, it will fly upside down but good luck getting it out unless you're a mile off the ground. As you will see in the video in a few moments time when we're across on the flight line, uh, also going through, FBV camera angles downwards, nose likes to fall off, the nose is a poo scoop, uh, what else have I written on here as well? Uh, yeah, does not fit a Session or a Runcam 3S, uh, like the double sockets in the wings, which, whatever, I don't know what that one was for, uh, and the ESC was not up for standard. However, let's go back to the positive points, which is that we must not discount that this model is being mass produced which is fantastic for us as RC pilots at not a crazy price either I would personally like to have seen this model come out as a kit version so we can choose our own components in here because I really while I like the motor I'm pretty sure that motor came out of the Sunny Sky factory or the same motor factory which makes the Sunny Sky motors uh, servos are cheap and I personally would have chosen a better quality ESC uh, for the, the for the powertrain uh, if I'm honest uh, and yeah it's quite well full time way better than anything I could do and let's be honest it might be a little bit better than what you could do as well uh, definitely way better than anything I could do uh, and Zoe HD I've mentioned this before and I think it's a real big one uh, they are really really responsive to feedback from us as RC pilots so Zoe HD if you're watching this video and you've heard me mention a lot of negative points Actually, please try and take some of these away and improve this model as well because it does look really really cool uh, and for, anyway what we are now going to go and do we're going to jump across to the flight line uh, and listen for not only my feedback but also Austin's feedback with his maiden uh, of the Dart XL is that we were both super surprised on how floaty these models really were they really do float in the sky but also look out for the thrust angle issue because both my model and Austin's model, remember both of us bought these out of our own money for our own abuses, and you can already see I've abused mine, uh, is that there is a manufacturing defect with them right now, which is the thrust angle is wrong, uh, and you need to put three, at least three millimeters worth of washers behind the motor mount at the back on the top two uh, screws to push the motor down so the model will fly in a straight line without you having to put uh, I think I ended up about three, maybe even four mils worth of down uh, trim in the elevons just to get the model to fly straight. And when I was on full knacker, I was having to put down in the model as well. Yeah, not the best out of the box experience and then onto the flight line, if I'm, I'm afraid. However, with a few minor modifications, some carbon fiber rods in there, four mil plywood base through there, that should stiffen it up, and a layer of laminate for the nose, that'll be happy days. And also my little mod here for this rear cover uh, to get rid of, I, I threw it over there on the floor, the bulkiness of this. And again, if you own one of these, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. This back cover, or the black cover for that, really bulky. All I did was just get a piece of paper, measure it around, and all I've done is just glue two pieces of Depron together. And I've made myself a, just a sensible lid. So happy days. Anyway, let's get ourselves across to the flight line. Enjoy the rest of the... Uh, antics on the flight line for myself matt let's go hey. right double maiden because you tried flying yours the other day didn't you yeah i may have forgot the um 
Nothing important though. No, no. Only a wing spar. That's not important. Yeah. It would have been a bit floppy. It would have been, yeah. So we've got two Dart XLs here. Austin, you bought yours, didn't you? Yeah. I bought mine. I bought mine. Uh, we've got one with the wing fences. See, I can do family friendly. That's not what I called them earlier. Um, and we've got mine without the wing fences because I've got no intention of flying it slow. Uh, how was the build? Oh, horrific. Worst build I've ever done. Yeah. Took all of 48 seconds, I think. Something, Something like that. It took longer to set the ESC, didn't it, than yeah. the rest of it? Yeah, <laughs> once you figure out how to work that. Are they still fetching? They've, they've got there. Oh, jeez. Yeah, and he just stuck his uh, wing in the stream. <laughs> There's a lifting wing, which I think they are. There you <laughs> I can't even see it. Oh, good job you got some wellies on. Low. Yeah. Well, we thought it was a little bit low. That's just gone. Uh, what did we say? <laughs> I don't think it has. <laughs> it's probably still in it. It's still hovering. Oh, jeez. We've been here 10 minutes. That's two models. <laughs> Just stood there looking at it. That's not a I good sign, a is it? That is stream. That is probably in the stream. Don't we? We got the other cameraman down there. <laughs> um, what battery are you going for? I've got a Zippy 4500 4S. You've gone? For, oh, you've gone for a monster. Uh, I've only gone for a 2200 4S. Well, I've, got a tw 60. I've, I've got a spare 2200 3S. I'd stick a 2200 in it because yeah. there's less weight in the nose and less chance good of it point. snapping off because we've well, seen yeah. the nose snap off it. Yeah. So what I've, I've gone for a higher C one in mine. Oh, have you? In there. Oh, you're 4S though, aren't you? Yeah, I've gone for 4S and a high C battery because we really want to cane the bollocks off it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we'll see how that goes. But, yeah, I had, a, I had every intention of laminate it. You'll see that I've even put the hole out there for the wing, for the video transmitter. Uh, just really busy with work, hence we're really late on the uh, maiden on this one, or these two now. Yeah. Uh, so uh, it is what it is. No flight controller, no nothing in it. Totally um, bog standard. Not big fans of the noses though, are we? Well, no. I'm not. Because that's just, look. It look, looks upside down. It's upside down, and it's just going to collect poo immediately. Um, oh, even, and I had, to, even with your, uh, I had yeah. to get the Dremel out and make, bore, those bigger, yeah. make the hole bigger for um, the camera. Looking at your um, camera, yeah, that's run cam three. Yeah, it looks like you're going to get the bottom of the the plastic in there plastic for some in reason. It. Yeah. yeah, so I need to have a look at that. See if it, oh, there you go. That. Not very good. No, at all. And then of course it looks like you've got an air vent up here on the bottom, but actually no air can actually get through it. No, because you've got all the polystyrene in the way, well the foam in the way. Mm. I think it'll be a case of somebody designing a a better nose for it. Better nose for it. It desperately needs it. Um, we were also chatting in the office earlier, weren't we? It's yep. blatantly a copy of the mini track. There's oh, no two that. ways about it. The the, the, the fuse dimensions are the both ways exactly the same, and that is no accident uh, okay. at all. It's it's exactly the same. However, if you were gonna make a duplicate of the of mini track aircraft. of an aircraft, you would you've got to actually give Zo HD thumbs up because oh, yeah. it's completely visually completely different. And uh, another side note, which is completely unrelated to the actual model itself, is that Zo HD have been absolute ten to the dozen on Facebook. Uh, every single day they've posted something new. They've really uh, encouraged other pilots to get involved and been sharing what their videos have been doing, what their models have been doing. Uh, it's been really positive. So thumbs they up from are, that point of view as they're well. They're giving the hobby a good. Yeah, yeah. Publicity. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know, that's what the best thing about them. They're trying, and at the moment they look like they're succeeding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you've got the orbit wing, you've got the dart, yeah. mini, you've got the nano talon. Yeah. So for Four me, so great for, models. Yeah, a nano talon, absolutely love that model, to say yeah. the least. Uh, yeah, it gets quite a lot of airtime at home. Anyway, coming back onto a serious point, a couple of minor things we don't like about these the bent down wing tips, because they'll catch and just break over time. With the rest of the plastic, which is on the model, it would have been nice to see plastic caps on the wing tips, because they'll just break off. Uh, the nose comb definitely needs to be refought. Uh, and what was the other thing we didn't like about it? There was one other thing. Just those, the way the, the tail bits. The hold on. Oh yeah, the little clips underneath. Uh, and the other minor point from my point of view is that I would have liked to have seen top mounted servos for more torque uh, on the elevator on the surfaces because the uh, push rods will bend. So anyway, that's a, enough of an introduction to the Dart XL. We're going to go and chuck them in the sky and see what happens. Yeah. Uh, I can hear some voices behind us. They, they have returned. From their um, 
Excuse is it me. wet? It depowered itself before it submersed itself. Oh. Well, that was handy. <laughs> I think we've done that. We'll do it again. <laughs> oh, <fuck laughs> we don't want to repeat, do we? No, we don't. Not bad. <laughs> what are you saying? So you can see it's a, the sun's out here today. It is now. Shining nicely. What can go wrong? I'm not. Though no, Matt's probably not going to put that bit in the video. Huh? <laughs> and he loves men, what? <laughs> He'll have to put it a bit in the video now. <laughs> <laughs> right. You looking good? No, the, the stupid camera mount in the front. Yeah. Right, right, there, up, down. That's true. Right. 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 This will be fun. Ready? Right, so we'll go right. Yeah. So you're going to do a right turn on the A-Rom. I've got a bit of a... I'll go right, I'll go right. It's going wrong, mate. No. That's right. <laughs> is it? Yeah, that's just the right way. So you're going to go yeah. right. On Let's go in left. Right on, right on the transmitter. I'm ready. Maiden! Oh, that's a knee, mate. Oh, looking near the store, isn't it? Oh, I don't have the uh, winglet little thing. Uh, yeah, but it's looking... Yeah, a bit near the store. Is it a Zoe HD? Is it a track? It's the Guard XL. Oh, lost it. No. That doesn't sound right, does it? That sounds weird. Yeah. I did do it up, wasn't it? Rolls terribly. So, when are you going to do some stuff? Yeah. Oh. There's a real one, aren't there? Yeah, okay, be careful. Mine's lovely! You've got to give it its due. I knew we were going to cane the knackers off it, but... Off gliding well. When, you, when it comes down. in, you've got to land it eventually. Oh, that stop works well, doesn't it? Yeah. That's still going, yeah. <laughs> and you put the spar in, Matt, did you? Yeah, good. Yeah. <laughs> it rolls all right, doesn't it, or not? Yeah, I've got to go to medium rate because it is climbing under. That doesn't sound right. No. Did you glue all the sable bits in? What the sable bit? Oh, I haven't put expo on this. <laughs> yeah, that's full down at the moment. That's right down. Funny, isn't it? It's like testing the battery strap. Yeah, but that was full down then. What, to make it yeah. fly level? Yeah. Now it's finally going. That's full down in it. Full down? Yeah. I'm still having to put down in it now. Have you got a buff down with this thing? Ooh, lawn dart. Yeah, full, I've got to pull up. Oh. Oh, oh, oh. fucking. Shoots my French. That's it. Oh, dear. We go get that one. So, um, Matt. Yeah. When are you going to do some stuff? <laughs> um, I think. Oh, well. Oh, no, no, this will make a great shot with that in the background. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> you better go and get that mess. Yeah. Away. I've got a feeling. Well, the battery's still connected. We'll be back. Yeah, all right. <coughs> yeah, that was full down on the. Uh, yeah, we'll full up on the sticks, full down, and even then it won't like fly properly. And I couldn't roll out of it fast enough. Whoops. Try to bend out too late, didn't you? Yeah. Mm. It sounded odd though, didn't it? It did sound a little bit. Mm. And the motor, uh, the ESC was definitely calibrated. It did glide all right though, I was quite surprised by that. It sounds almost like it was, I know some prop noise, but it this kind of yeah. prop's not getting clean air or something. Yeah. Oh yeah, really Could it dirty. Been the noise yeah, it really dirty, yeah. yeah. Could it have been the, excuse me, the noise <laughs> through the, um, and in right 4K. <laughs> <laughs> the noise through the rear vent. hatch, vents. Because it's got some. It's not got a rear vent now. Yeah, it's got a front vent. Everything else is well, great. They the nose was a bit weak, didn't they? A bit. 
Yeah, we... Yeah, but you did oh, hit the R, didn't you? Oh, hang on, where do we start? Is that the shortened version? Yeah. Oh, yeah, the yeah, battery is still connected. Yeah. Because it's all over here. Oh, it works it easy. Oh. Oh. That's got a few spare bits, hasn't it? Oh, let me run cam. That's fucking annoying, isn't oh. it? Oh, we're still recording! Yeah, yeah, the battery is still connected. Brilliant. It has moved itself forward or backwards. <laughs> the C A G is slightly off now. Yeah. Oh, there you go. It's not in that bad a shape, really. Yeah, it's not good for. A... I'm gonna give it a tug. I can't. Oh yeah, got it. I mean, I can't wait to see the footage because I missed that. Yeah, I can play. It was straight down. Straight yeah, you you yeah, you must admit you're doing an upside down loop. Yeah. With all full up to get it to loop was a little bit optimistic. Yeah. Oh, hello. You got your pooper scooper here, look. Oh, I'm in the scoop. Yeah. I mean, it's quite warm. Oh, then, oh, that's wobbly, but that might have been the um, landing. So, uh, what Matt's got to do now is distract Austin. i got a horrible feeling mine will end up like that today. No, no, you're fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. Right. right. So you've got to try and distract Austin enough Anyone to swap the fuselage over. Because right yeah. yours is the same. Yeah. You say... Just check the motor wobble. Just on a serious point, for that, actually, that prop noise, look how much... And the prop is disrupted yeah. by that top yeah. lid. That, could to, that top lid could do within half the height. Yeah, yeah, there's no reason for it to be that high. No. Maybe that'll come out in the well, version so three. Yeah. So what, if you, well, if it flies... Yeah. <laughs> let's see if it makes the same noise. Yeah, I'm on, eh? interesting, yeah. It'd be interesting. Well, that's the, well, you've got the idiot about to fly it, so... Take, uh, the, other one, the other thing to prove it, the other, one way over the other, is take the lid off and fly it without the lid. Yeah. So obviously go that in a bit. There you go, let's record him. Excellent. Got it in there, he might as well be recording, haven't you? Yeah. yeah. Austin loves men. Oh, it just shut down. Has it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. See, I've got it on a special... Special um, Auntie Loves, Auntie Love. Not anymore. Not anymore. Yeah. Well, it's going the right way. Up. Yeah, just get just just fly, fly it quite high. Just get some gentle curves, oh. corners on it. Still climbing for you, isn't it? Still. Yeah. Still climbing, and I'm. Front of the CHG mark. Flare. Beautiful. Yeah. Oh. That was right, wasn't it? That's how you land. So, uh, Matt. Yeah. What? Twenty <laughs> <laughs> CG. Those straight lines. Yeah, it's in front of them. Yeah. So we only got thrust angle issue. I see. It looked like it was wallaby, wasn't it? So yeah. I wonder if it's more expo needed and a bit more speed, maybe flying. Yeah, but yeah. no, you've got down trim in that now. Look, you're down a couple of mil on both sides. Yeah. To get it into fly straight, so is that you put a bit more nose weight in it and we'll dig out some washers and stick those down the back? Yeah, you're flying with Well, that's the 3S battery in there. Yeah, you've got that around up front, haven't you? Yeah, so yeah. and the two little ones to help. Would it be better to fly with a four, that 4S lump of mine? Do you want to stick mine in there? I'm just thinking weight wise because that was a huge great bit of battery you had in it. Yeah, yeah, well, uh, uh, yeah. Aust Austin's is a big ass 500, yeah, 5000, whatever it is. Yeah, uh, hang on, two. That one, they fly behind us because that sun gets bright. Yeah. Alright? That's the top. That looks better. Still climbing. Yeah, it is. Oh. Well, yeah, we just put a trim back in it, didn't we? Still climbing. Yeah. Yeah, that's motor angle then. Definitely in it. Sorry, thrust angle. The only way it comes down is if you take the throttle off. Yeah, it's thrust angle. 
But Christ, does it ever glide? It glides forever. Yeah, That's one thing I noticed with mine in a minute. Well, what's left of it? Yeah, look. It's actually trying to gain height while gliding. It does look like a king on cling on bird of prey. Yeah, yeah, it looks good, doesn't it? Yeah. You're a bit high though, aren't you? Chris? Can you just give it a bit of full knacker? Yeah, yours doesn't sound as bad as mine, but it just kind no. yeah, that's motor thrust angle. Look, it's just trying to tip itself over. All right, that'll do. All right, let's come in then. It's going to go for a catch. Oh. Hey! And does it collect a little poo in the nose? Yeah, okay. probably. Did you get that, Craig? Yeah, we got that. Huh? Oh, we got poo on the wing. We've got a bit of coke, I thought, right? I've definitely got poo on the wing, haven't I? Yeah, that's a definite landmine there. Oh no, it's worm shit. I what? mean, um. Well, worm, worm poo. Yeah. Mmm, yummy. Yummy. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, pooper scoop, just a lot of moisture. Yeah. I think it looks as though it flew better with the extra weight, nose weight. With the bigger battery in there. Yeah, but yeah. as soon as you powered up, yeah, it, yeah, it, yeah. Just, it, wanted go, it just wanted to go straight up. Yeah. Washes on the top then. Yeah. Yeah, definitely, it may definitely. be a, a case of actually flying it with 100% um, throws on it all. No, no, you, you need the motor, the motor needs need, to go yeah. down, because stop it climbing. And besides that, it was quite graceful in the sky. It you was, wasn't it? it twice, but no, it nice. Well, yeah, well, look when I shut, I shut the motor off over the way, yeah. and it just yeah. Yeah. glid in, glided yeah. in. That's pretty much a Talon motor as well, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, 2260. Look at the can. If anything, you're yeah. still flying with a slightly bit of down on the yeah. reflex. Yeah. And that's probably to count right in there. But yeah, I was just cranking it higher and higher and higher just to yeah. Yeah. get it to sort yeah. itself out. That's probably why it was. Yeah. Well, so it was to... climbing even with down in the fins. So have, yeah. you, have you lost the aerial wire? No. Or do you, only have one, you only have one stuck out? No, it's probably floating inside. It's inside. Yeah. I can see it. It's just in there. There we go. So it glided great. Mate. It First glides angle. great. I like it. Yeah. yeah. Good. We need to change that, obviously, a couple like of you say. A couple wash. of washers Just behind a, there. Yeah. yeah, a couple of two more washers or something. Yeah, and yeah. then buy myself some lighter or smaller 4S's. Yeah. Oh, no, it'd be fine with the bigger one. The yeah. reason for putting the smaller battery in it was just to keeping the weight out of the model in yeah. case you have a really rough landing because you're not used to it. Yeah. Yeah. Dave taught uh, me that one. That's <laughs> probably the yeah? easiest. 2200 4S. 2200 4S, yeah. round up the front with a run cam in there. Yeah. yeah, that's probably the easiest I've ever landed a plane. Yeah, yeah. Good, nice, it was, because it, it glided so nice, and you did nice big wide sweep round as well, yeah. both times. Well, I sort of noticed I did a wide sweep angle, didn't I? Yeah, you did, you did, yeah, yours, yours is wide. Mm. Just vertically low. <laughs> vertically challenged. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm going to take a trip to the car and actually get a model out. I better go and get a model so I can fly, ain't I? I better go and get some batteries. Mind up! Model, thank oh, you. Oh, you just, yeah. oh, you just. I know what the fuck have you done. Stood on it. Oh. <laughs> oh no, mate. It's on camera. You own a you own a ZX XL. Like that one. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. It's official. Okay, batteries back as well. Oh. Anyway, you've now got 37 minutes, 31 seconds of filming. Brilliant.